Hi there, my name is Kayla Bellage and I'm the Health Promotion Coordinator for the Canadian Mental Health Association, Sudbury, Manitoulin. Today I'm here with Lisa, our Human Resource Administrator, um, who also works for CMHA, Sudbury, Manitoulin, to discuss workplace wellness during the COVID-19 pandemic. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you today? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm well, thanks for having me. Good, awesome. So to begin, I just want to mention, I guess, that everything has really shifted in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, and many of us are still adjusting to this new normal. So I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about how workplaces have been affected by the pandemic. Sure. Um, workplaces have really um, shifted the way that they're operating in response to COVID-19. Um, many workplaces have made their very best efforts to um, shift their staff to working remotely. Uh, and I believe that we're slowly learning that, you know, this is actually possible. We can actually still get stuff done. We can still operate. We can still remain productive. Um, of course, there's challenges with uh, working like from home, for example. Um, children or pets. <laughs> I know when I was working from home, uh, a few months ago, every time I was in a, a Skype meeting or a Zoom meeting, my dog would try to climb up in my lap and paw at the keyboard. So I ended up having to uh, lock my dogs up every time I had a meeting. But I think that we're all finding creative ways to kind of get through it and uh, support one another because um, we are all in it together, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can definitely hear you on um, the distractions because I have a pet <laughs> myself and I know um, whenever, you know, there's a visitor at the door, someone walks by, she's barking and it can be quite distracting, but learning yeah. <laughs> awesome. So whether people are going into work or working from home, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has probably changed the way most employees work. Um, and we know that often stress can be a result of ongoing changes um, and uncertain circumstances. So how can employees cope with stress and perhaps build resilience during this time? Uh, you're absolutely right. So things like uncertainty, um, perpetual change, definitely challenges our mental health. Um, and so since there's so much that's going on around us that's beyond our control, um, I would really suggest trying to focus on the things that we can control. And one of those things could be as simple as our routines, right? So trying to maintain the routine that we had prior to the pandemic happening, um, it helps to maintain a sense of normalcy. Um, so trying to do things like take breaks at the same time that you were doing when you were on site, um, doing the same activities you were doing when you took breaks when you were on site. Um, and even something as uh, simple as uh, packing a lunch like you would if you were going to the workplace. Um, some people do find that a bit silly, um, but it is actually proven that some people who are working from home get actually more caught up in the work that they're doing and they're forgetting to eat or they're not eating enough. And then there's the opposite side of the spectrum where people are overeating because it's so accessible and the kitchen is right next door. Um, so it's just one of those small ways to kind of um, keep ourselves in check and ensure that we're eating enough and eating properly. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, and I can add to that too. Um, uh, it's important to remember that human beings um, were innately social. So social connectivity is essential to mental health. Mm. Physical distancing, of course, has um, obviously made this challenging, but it's not impossible. Um, people have gotten really creative with uh, ways to maintain social re relationships. Um, I do have a girlfriend who just told me, actually, um, that ever since COVID hit, she and three of her other friends who all live in different cities um, have weekly video chats, I guess, but they watch a movie together. So they're watching a movie together virtually. So, and it's something that they think they're going to continue to do even when all the restrictions are lifted. So I think we're all being really creative and it's, it's challenging our creativity, which is good. Mm -hmm. That's so wonderful to hear that, you know, most people can get creative with these types of things like doing the, uh, the video movie night or, you know, a video date night or whatever it might yeah. be. That's kind of nice. Yeah. 
especially yeah. being friends who are living in different cities. So now, right? you know, yeah. all your friends, whether if they're in Sudbury or in other cities, you can all get mm -hmm. together regardless. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So as COVID-19 restrictions are relaxed, and I guess now that we're in phase three of reopening, um, people are going to start returning to work. And what might that look like in terms of employee wellness? Um, well, even though the restrictions are being relaxed um, and people are returning, some people might still be really nervous um, about this return to work and it might cause some stress and that can impact employee wellness. Um, so when employees are dealing with things like stress or illness, it can actually increase the potential for um, what's called presenteeism. And basically what that means is that it's a person who is uh, reporting to the workplace despite the fact that they are ill or that they're distracted, um, um, maybe they're experiencing anxiety or they're, they're just not mentally there um, in the work that they're doing. Um, so an example could be, you know, maybe an employee is, yes, physically in the workplace, but they're actually playing games on their phone um, instead of being mentally present and being productive. So to combat presenteeism, particularly presenteeism that is caused by stress and worry, uh, specifically about our current situation, I would suggest um, self-care practices um, and in particular getting quality sleep. So we all are aware that sleep helps us regulate our emotions. Um, it helps us to cope with stress. So if our minds are not clouded by stressful or negative thought patterns, um, we can be more present in the moment and in the work that we're doing. Right, yeah, sleep is so important. I definitely hear that as well. And um, it can be helpful kind of to just your general health as well and really boost that immune system functioning. And I think that's really important given that, you know, there's um, a pandemic going around and we want to be in a healthy state as much as we can. Yeah, yeah so definitely for sure. Being on sleep. Awesome. Um, so are there any tools or resources out there that you can recommend to organizations who are looking to promote positive mental health in the workplace? Yes, actually, um, there's the National Standard of Canada for Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace. It's a great resource for organizations who believe in promoting mental health uh, mm -hmm. in the workplace and minimizing the potential for psychological harm. Uh, essentially, it's a set of guidelines, tools, resources, and it's designed to help agencies foster a philosophy that mental health is as important as physical health. Um, so the development of the standard was a massive collaborative effort. It was led by the Mental Health Commission of Canada. Um, they pulled together a task group, um, and it was very strategic in that they wanted to gain um, insight into different areas of expertise. So they took input from health and safety professionals, um, unions, uh, law experts, workplace mental health specialists, but it was re really as well-rounded. Um, and the standard was actually lost, launched in 2013. And since then, a long list of organizations have voluntarily adopted the standards. So it's, it's definitely a really good, reliable, incredible resource. Um, good to know that um, such tools and resources exist out there. Mm -hmm. um, so as we get to the end of this interview, Lisa, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I think we've covered some good ground over the few minutes. Um, so thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for agreeing to participate in this. I know I'm definitely going to... Um, Put in place some of the strategies and some of the tips that you talked about for my own wellness especially at work mm -hmm. um, but yeah this is super super helpful thank you so much no problem all right take care now bye-bye